Welcome everyone, we will be starting in less than two minutes. Welcome. We will be starting in less than two minutes. We are live on the internet. We are live on Roku television. We are live worldwide. The Faith Baptist Church International Ministries. And we do welcome you. I'm Pastor Barry Spurred Adams from the Faith Baptist Church in Coral, New York. And thank you for joining us tonight. Let us begin by joining in prayer. Let us share in prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you for tonight's lesson. And we pray that we will apply it to our lives, that we may get the full benefits and the result that you have offered through your word. And we pray this, in this for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Tonight we want to look at more promises. Uh, this will be a promise based on a paradox that Jesus told. As you know that um, we have been exploring paradoxes, uh, parables, and also we have been looking at different ways in which through these uh, ways, through these ways that Jesus and the Bible has given us promises, promises of good things, promises that we can apply to our lives. Amen. So tonight we look at uh, Luke. Uh, the uh, ninth chapter and the 60th verse, Luke 9 and 60. And we look at this somewhat paradoxical statement. And this series is about promises. As we see in parallels, paradoxes, parables, and we may even touch upon some proverbs. Lots of peace. Luke 9 and 60, Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. The context of this is that um, in seeking discipleship, some people wanted to follow Jesus, and some people Jesus asked to follow him. Regardless, Jesus gave uh, at least three different uh, examples um, of what discipleship was all about and the call to discipleship was all about in the context of Luke 9 and 60. Specifically, he said to this person, uh, we're assuming it was a fairly young person, uh, after the person said, well, I'll follow you, I'll follow you 
but let me go home and as I um, paraphrase here and, 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 and once my father dies and I'm certain of my inheritance then I'll I'll follow you and many times when I have discussed this I've always said if you look at the three examples it's all about security that people seek to have before they follow Jesus you know they want to make sure that if the Jesus movement did not work out if following Jesus and following Jesus did not work out that they would have something to fall back on today we would say something like edging our bets or something like that we do it we do it in many ways. We say we believe, we say we would follow, we say this and we say that, but we, the human aspect of it sometimes um, make us hold back. Well, as you know, um, it was the custom and still is in many places that the eldest son, and we assume that this was the eldest son, that um, would receive the inheritance only after the father dies. So what can we see in this uh, saying of Jesus, in this somewhat paradoxical saying of Jesus, that will hold promises for us? Well, um, you know, Jesus' responds, you know, let that go. Let the dead bury his dead, and you come and you follow me. So if we can assume that, you know, that this person was saying this and based on the response of others, that the person was looking for security, then we can assume that when Jesus says, don't worry about your inheritance, if you follow me, you will be blessed. You would inherit a lot. So just flipping what he says, based on Jesus' response, just flipping it, we would have to say, hey, hey there's a promise there. A promise of Jesus blessing us when we don't hold back. The other thing that we uh, should be thinking about is this promise has to do with the future, not the past, not even the present. Because as far as in yet, he has not received in his inheritance and he has not followed Jesus yet. So it's futuristic, it's about the future. So many times we have to stop and think about how God blesses us and sometimes the promises that he gives to us is really based on the future. What will happen in the future? And I think here's a very good example of that. I think there are more promises that uh, we can find in this and maybe one more promise. Maybe if we look at the story carefully, some people are asking Jesus, can I follow you? Some people are being asked to follow Jesus. Um, we say that this promise is based on the future. We say that this promise is, is Jesus guaranteeing us. Jesus guaranteeing us, God guaranteeing us blessings, our inheritance. And then maybe um, I share one more, like I said with you. 
And again, if it's futuristic, if it is inheritance, there again, can we say, like some of the other promises that we have shared so far, that is this a promise of eternal life, eternal blessing? Can we interpret it that way? I think so. Perhaps. Why not? God bless you. And thank you so much for sharing tonight. And may his, may his face just continually shine upon you. God bless you. God bless you. Questions or anything to share? We're going to shut down the live portion of this, but we'll, we'll be staying. Um, we'll be staying here for a while for people to send their uh, questions or their suggestions or anything to share. And of course, this would be on demand and if you go to our website of course you'll see how you can get the on demand uh, portion of what we share tonight or if you go to Roku on your television uh, you know you would see the on demand of tonight uh, lessons which would be Promises 6. Promises 6 is what it will be entitled. Promises 6. So God bless you so much. God bless you so much. Promises 6. And thank you so much, number 193, for sharing tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to everyone. Thank you.